Welcome to this talk about our scoping review about extended reality and artificial intelligence. This research was conducted in collaboration with the University of Copenhagen, LMU Munich, Saarland University and the University of Innsbruck. My name is Therese Hitzler and I'm happy to present this work to you. Extended reality and artificial intelligence have attracted increasing interest from the scientific community and society in general. Previously, research in both fields has typically focused on problems within each field. However, advancements in tools and libraries have made both areas more accessible to researchers from different domains. Um, this resulted in a new research area at the intersection of XR and AI. Since this is an emerging field of research, it is currently challenging to obtain an overview of the research conducted at the intersection. The current body of literature includes reviews on particular aspects of XR and AI research. For example, reviews about intelligent virtual agents in different settings. Another focus of secondary literature is on specific application uh, fields and domains. For example, the use of intelligent virtual reality simulations for medical use cases. However, a comprehensive overview of the main research topics and problems that are solved with the combination of XR and AI are currently missing. With our paper, we addressed this gap and answered the following three research questions. First, we were interested in revealing the state of the art, covering the main topics that are researched at the intersection. Second, we wanted to know the main problem areas that are addressed with XR and AI research. And third, we were interested in how the research is conducted, meaning what algorithms, tools, software and models are used. To answer these three questions, we conducted a scoping review. Scoping reviews aim to provide a preliminary assessment of the potential size and scope of available literature. Thus, they aim to explore the range of evidence rather than a precise question. We followed the process suggested by Cooper et al. and Aromatares and Mann in the development and procedure of our reviewing protocol. We started with two sets of keywords, an AI-related one and an XR-related one. To cover a broad space, we used a data-driven approach to retrieve these sets of keywords by selecting keywords used in publications in relevant AI and XR venues. We then identified 203 relevant venues through database search on Web of Science and Scopus. Based on these, we conducted our search with the two keyword sets. We had a two-phase screening process where we screened submissions first on the abstract and then on the full text. The final 311 full papers were analyzed based on a codebook with 26 codes. For the screening and coding process, we first calibrated on 10% of the corpus with all coders in each step and then conducted the steps using single data extraction. For the results, I first want to give you an overview of the paper corpus. The number of papers increased over the time frame of five years that we were searching in. Most of the papers were published in XR venues and only 5,8% were published at AI venues. The frequency of keywords also shows that most of the papers are about VR rather than AR. We grouped the papers into four research directions. In the first one, we group papers that address or investigate an XR problem with an AI method. These papers typically present an algorithm or model to address an issue in XR, often with a focus on prediction and an empirical evaluation. In the second one, we group papers that use XR technology to address or investigate a problem related to an AI method. For example, visualizing a neural network and VR to enhance understandability. The third one are papers that address or investigate a problem related to intelligent virtual agents. They are, for example, concerned with the design of agents or with how users perceive them. The last category includes papers that apply an XR technology and AI method to an external problem, such as medical use cases or driving simulators. For the following steps, we focus on the first four research directions as we were not interested in external use cases of XR and AI in this review. Based on the four paper categories, we built a topology of the state-of-the-art XR and AI research. Here we grouped all papers of the review into five main topics based on the extracted research questions and contribution. The first one is using AI to create XR worlds. Here AI is used to create virtual representations of environments, people, agents and objects. How these are created is by either realistically replicating the real world, modifying the real world, or generating a synthetic world. The second topic is an understanding users and XR. We group papers into this category that use AI methods to understand some phenomenon or characteristic or aspect about users and XR environments. For example, the prediction of VR sickness falls into this category. The third topic is where AI is used to support interaction in XR. 
Many PPC include algorithms to improve tracking when interacting with virtual objects, for example, hand tracking improvement for 3D gesture-based interaction. Another common area are locomotion techniques, where AI algorithms are used to predict movement patterns, for example, to improve redirected walking. For the next topic, we group papers about interaction with intelligent virtual agents in, into one group. Here, papers investigate perceptual aspects of human agent interaction, for example, about users' perception of parapersonal space in a, when being in a crowd of agents. The last topic is about using XR to support AI research. Here, we only found seven papers that, for example, visualized some AI algorithm in XR to improve uh, understandability. We also analyzed the topic distribution for HCI papers. The distribution of research directions for HCI papers is almost the same as for the corpus in general. This might suggest that the topics at the intersection of XR and AI that are addressed by HCI papers also reflect the general distribution. However, that's not the case for topics. Here we found that most HCI papers use AI to support interaction. The second group is on creating XR worlds, mostly focusing on body representations. And we only found a few papers in the area of using AI methods to understand users, which we found quite surprising. We further analyzed the problem areas that these papers focus on and grouped them into 15 areas. We developed these areas based on three articles about main challenges in virtual environments, AR and AI by Billinghurst, Kim et al. and Slater. I'm only showing an overview here. The most common addressed problem areas are perception in neuroscience, interacting with intelligent virtual agents, presentation of virtual content and tracking technologies. The third research question was about how the research is conducted. As part of this answer, we present a list of algorithms, tools, datasets and networks that we collected from the reviewed papers. Finally, we discuss our findings and formulate 13 research challenges and opportunities, and I'm going to present the most interesting and important ones here. First, AI is mostly used to create realistic representations of the real world. In the area of understanding users, the focus is on performance-driven aspects of interaction. Then the most um, common interaction techniques that are supported by AI methods are currently gestural and locomotion techniques. Um, furthermore, studies on intelligent virtual agents are often based on perceptual experiments, but not often on actual implementations of them. And lastly, there's not much research on how XR can be used to support AI. In the following, I want to summarize some of the main challenges that we found. First, the papers typically record their own data and train their models on that. Although there are some examples showing that several papers are interested in the same phenomenon, like VR sickness, the studies are typically done on individual datasets. We did not find general datasets that are used by several papers, and thus the generalizability of the results is questionable. The second point is robustness. We found that many papers, in particular 73%, train and test their models on data from the same user study, and mostly on a very same task. Only in 27% of the papers, a second or third study was performed to test the models on new data. This is a concern regarding data leakage, since the models are typically tested with already known data, or at least rarely tested with the data that includes unseen scenarios or influences. The last thing I want to discuss here is that we were missing discussions around ethical and societal impacts. We were surprised by this since both the topics, XR and AI, are sparking huge discussions not only in the scientific community but society in general. We think that it is important to think about and discuss societal and ethical impacts of the research in this area and want to start a discussion around potential ways to address this. Some AI conferences, for example, have recently started to require statements about potential negative societal impacts of the proposed research. With this, I want to conclude my talk. We present a scoping review covering 311 papers presenting work at the intersection of XR and AI. We present our results as a topology of the state of the art covering five main topics. We also analyze main problem areas that benefit from combining XR and AI methods. We summarize datasets, tools, software, and models in a list of, in the appendix of this paper. Lastly, we discuss 13 research opportunities and challenges and discuss potential for future research in this area. Thank you for your attention.